Violent crime in Tijuana has reached record levels. During just one week in August, 48 people lost their lives in homicides. That's nearly the same total of homicide victims in San Diego in all of last year. Reporter Sandra Dibble takes a closer look at some of the crimes that took place in a seven-day period. August's first homicide took place on a Tuesday afternoon in the middle-class neighborhood of Jardines del Rubí. The victim was Jose Luis Nunez. The 27-year-old police officer was shot outside his house while leaving for his job. Two suspects have been arrested, but the investigation continues. Later in the day, in the eastern working-class neighborhood of El Florido, a man was shot at a taxi stand near a busy supermarket. As homicide investigators worked the scene, daily life continued. On the following afternoon, the man's body was gone. The bloody bench cleaned up. Candles flickered in his memory. It was Wednesday afternoon in Valle Verde when a gunman opened fire on Romelia Lucero as she played slot machines outside a corner grocery store. The next day, the slot machines were gone. A simple wood cross marked the spot where her life so violently ended. Across town, gunshots shattered the quiet of Colinas de la Presa late on a Thursday afternoon. By the time the Red Cross ambulance arrived, two male victims were dead outside a small townhouse. Some neighbors watched from the nearby sidewalks, but for others, life went on. Authorities say most of these killings are connected to the local drug trade and take place in poorer areas of the city. These are places where people come from across Mexico for a better life. As the sun set on a Thursday night, residents of one eastern Tijuana neighborhood waited to return home as investigators combed through the scene of a homicide. Ambulances from Tijuana's Red Cross rush to the scene when a shooting occurs. On this Friday night, Supervisor Nestor Saucedo is driving at breakneck speed to the neighborhood of El Lago. But it is too late. Jorge Luis Gonzalez is dead, shot in the head. His sister is disconsolate. Later that evening, off a busy boulevard in La Mesa, this man was shot in the leg but survived. Paramedics provided emergency care, then took him to a public hospital. Many shooting victims initially survive an assault, only to later die of their injuries. After dark, the killings continue. Behind Tijuana's baseball stadium, Dozens of police officers have descended on an apartment complex. Many officers are heavily armed. The residents have retreated inside. At the foot of one building, a teenager lies dead. His name is Edgar Guerrero, and he has just turned 18. He was shot while spending the evening here with friends. It is now up to the forensics experts to gather evidence, and up to homicide detectives to piece together the crime. But in most cases, the killers are never found. The teenager's father believes police accidentally shot his son, mistaking him for a suspect. But homicide detectives say otherwise. Their ballistics tests show the teenager did not die at the hand of a police weapon. <laughs> mis necesidades en manos de Dios, a él también lo ponía en manos de Dios, pero estaba con el temor que un día ya no volviera. Y ese día pasó. Y desgraciadamente en una forma trágica que él no merecía. Pero ahí está Dios. Four days after he died, the teen was buried at Tijuana's Monte de los Olivos Cemetery. He was mourned by a large crowd of friends and family members. <laughs>
some of the city's poorest residents are buried in this public cemetery in eastern Tijuana. Those homicide victims whose bodies are not claimed or cannot be identified are sent to the common grave, buried in wood coffins stacked a half dozen deep. The killings continue. This time, the victim is a taco vendor shot on a Monday morning at a busy stand in Colonia Buenavista. Again, the family is left to mourn and to wonder. The rising numbers of homicides has taken a toll on Baja California's medical examiner's office known as SEMEFO. By law, this office must certify the causes of all violent deaths. These facilities have room for 120 bodies, and officials here say sometimes they surpass that number, and they are always at their limit. With Sandra Dibble, I'm Luis Cruz reporting for the San Diego Union-Tribune.